A quick tangent before I get into the video. I just want to say I do not condone the actions of Sherry Pie, and I stand with the victims who were affected by the Queen and hope that both parties receive the counseling needed to move on from the situation. What Sherry Pie did was horrible, but I'm not the one who needs to forgive her. If she's given a second chance in the community, I don't really have a say, but if she's not, again, I don't have a say either. It's ultimately up to the cities that she performs in and the victims of the situation. The thing I do have a say in is that I want her to grow and learn from her mistakes and move on to a place of peace and positivity where she's not really hurting anyone else. With that being said, please do not send death threats or hate to anyone mentioned in this video. My goal is not to bring up this drama again to hurt any party involved. It's simply speculation on a TV show that I love that is unfortunately tied to these events. For the majority of the time, I'm analyzing the character of Sherry Pie that was shown to us on TV, and only do I touch on out-of-show events for context. I don't plan to talk about the details of the allegation as it is not my place and should be left in the past for only the victims to explain if they feel ready. With all that being said, let's get into the video. RuPaul's Drag Race Season 12 is one of the most beloved seasons of Drag Race by both fans and critics. It has some of the best challenges, runways, and guest judges we've ever seen on the show. Not to mention one of the most diverse and lovable cast from any season of Drag Race. Season 12 was insanely well received on arrival and this progressed through the whole season. Where some seasons start out really strong and lose steam towards the end, Drag Race Season 12 never really got boring. This is just a testament to how amazing the casting was, because I cannot tell you how miraculous it was that the season turned out coherent after what happened shortly after the premiere. Last Thursday, BuzzFeed News published an article exposing Sherry Pie for catfishing multiple actors. <sighs> If you're like me, you definitely felt the dark cloud over the second premiere episode last week, especially because it heavily featured Sherry Pie. Possible spoiler alert, I have heard Sherry Pie will make it quite far in the season. But RuPaul's Drag Race said in a statement that she is disqualified from the competition and will not be at the grand finale taping this spring. Hours from the premiere of the second cast of Queens, RuPaul's Drag Race put out a statement across all their social media platforms stating the disqualification of contestant Sherry Pie. This queen, who we haven't even met yet, would be edited out of all future episodes and they would match all money won by Sherry with donations to various organizations. This was again announced right before the second episode with 12 more to go after this. No one completely knew the extent to how this would change the season going forward, because unless you were sleuthing for placement spoilers online, you wouldn't really know how Sherry did. However, once the episode aired with Sherry still in the edit, the only edit that they couldn't change, something was really clear. Disqualified contestant Sherry Pie was being set up to win the entire season. Okay, that may be an exaggeration, but let me explain. The formula for RuPaul's Drag Race has been thoroughly dissected over the past couple of years as the series has blown up in the online world. There are multiple types of edits queens receive that clue people into how their story may play out on the show. The winner's edit, also commonly referred to as the top four edit, helps to keep a queen in the forefront of the viewer's mind for the duration of the season. Whether this is giving them confessionals, workroom talks, or just one of the other contestants talking about them, all of this serves as a way for the viewer to think, oh yeah, I know a lot about this queen, they've done well in the competition, I think they deserve to win. And it was clear from episode 2 they were setting Sherry up to be a very strong presence in the season. I can tell just based off of the few clips that were left of Sherry throughout the season that she was the producer's darling. This is the queen the producers turn to to create storyline, often starting workroom conversations where others may be too nervous to. Sherry is a very smart person. She knew how to get her screen time whether it be directly focusing on her or just using her as a jumping off point for other queens. She knew that giving the producers what they wanted would help her in the competition and probably help her stay around longer. The best way to create a winner, however, is to give them wins and challenges. To say Sherry Pie's wins were questionable would be very understated. In order to manipulate the story and push certain queens the producers see as winners, Ru will sometimes give wins to slightly less deserving queens because the producers would rather see them in top 4 than someone who did better in the challenge. For example, episode 3 saw Heidi in Closet bounce back from her first episode with a hilarious performance and a really campy runway. Widow Von Du also stepped up to a character that she didn't want to play, but did so in order to help her group succeed, and then became the standout performance of that group. Both of these storylines and performances could have easily justified a win for either queen, but Sherry was seen as the best contender out of the three in the producer's eyes, so the win was allotted to her for this performance. All of the sudden, lightning struck! Yeah, I 
could. I don't think anyone could make that work. Now, before I move on, I just want to say, for as many people complain about the rigory of the show, I do want to say that talent does win in the end. Regardless of the producers handpicking who they want to do well early on, the queens still have to live up to the expectations and perform decently in the challenges. Beyond the show, queens who were seen as robbed of wins or just shown to be strong talents go on to have great careers fueled by extremely supportive fans. So, with Sherry Pie taking multiple wins and being the emotional center for storylines and conversations of the season, take her out and what do we have left? Not a lot. I'll get into this a little later in the video, but the storyline scraps that were left made for entertaining TV, but it had less than stellar payoff for a lot of the queens. The second half of the season felt very lacking in an overarching story, relying on the personalities of the queens to push us through each episode. I am just so grateful that we had such strong personalities this season that made for really entertaining feel-good stuff, especially through quarantine. But let's take a look at what the season could have been if it went as planned. There's a subreddit called Drag Race Spoilers that somehow knows the elimination order and queen interaction months in advance before the show airing. The subreddit serves as a place for speculation and predictions of how storylines will play out on the season, and though I can't really get behind knowing exactly what's going to happen months in advance to a season airing, to each their own, and I hope that people really enjoy knowing the spoilers months in advance. What the subreddit couldn't predict, however, is the quick edit made to remove Sherry. So it unintentionally serves as a time capsule for what could have been. The overarching storyline of the season was rumored to be a competition between Sherry Pie and Gigi Good, a young fashion queen whose talents were very apparent by her first appearance. Both queens came out guns a-blazing, with Sherry and Gigi both placing in the top two and winning two challenges by episode 5. This is where most likely their storyline was set up. The parallel of these queens was undeniable each starting out insanely strong but faltering towards the second half of the show, allowing for other queens to gain wins where they deserve them. You're safe. You may join the other girls. You will not see me in the bottom again. However, the rivalry didn't end at them competing for wins. It was heavily rumored that Sherry Pie was supposed to be the hero and Gigi Good was supposed to be the villain, another commonly used edit on Drag Race. A hero versus villain edit on Drag Race is an extremely slippery slope for everyone involved. To say that the Drag Race community has a problem with both hate and racism would be an understatement, but we'll save that topic for another day. I just want to put into perspective how we almost lived in a timeline where Sherry Pie would have been more favored than Gigi Good. Though Gigi is not perfect and has messed up over her time after Drag Race, I'm still extremely proud of her for living her truth as a trans non-binary person. We have seen time and time again on Drag Race the villain getting all of their negative moments showcased with very few or any moments of them being humanized. Without these villains being humanized, it makes it easier for awful fans of Drag Race to attack them because they don't realize just how much an edit can affect the perception of a person. Gigi is a perfect example. I don't know if we would have gotten the moment of her talking about her gender identity if she was painted as a villain. On the other hand, I don't know if the backlash or shunning of Sherry would have been as widespread if she was painted as a hero and we saw the original edit. We can even see a true example of this that has played out with Fifi O'Hara, now known as Jeremy, who was edited to be a villain on both of his seasons. The talent of Jeremy was so apparent both times around, but the competition got to him. The editors and producers chose to air every single negative moment of Jeremy, leaving a very bad taste in the viewer's mouth. This is juxtaposed with Sharon Needles, the hero counterpart to Jeremy on season 4 and eventual winner. Sharon has allegedly groomed a minor and has been called out for racist remarks and microaggressions towards POC queens in the community. All of this has come out and yet Sharon still gets a lot of support from fans and Jeremy still gets hate for appearances on a show from 5 to 9 years ago. And though yes, the hate has flipped in the past year, people will see a character on TV and think that's the real person and that's who they still are in 2021 when the show may be aired in 2012. Because people still see someone as a character on a show from 9 years ago, people like Sharon will still get love and people like Jeremy will still get hate. It leaves no room for the villains to grow, and no repercussions for a hero that may not be actually a hero. So with this comparison in mind, think of the world where the original edit came out and Sherry gained a lot of fans. People may be more ready to defend her, people may be blaming the victims for not coming forward sooner or not believing them at all. Sharon and Jeremy serve as an example of what could have happened with Gigi and Sherry. 
It just goes to show that in real life, nothing is black and white. There's no heroes versus villains, so you shouldn't treat queens that way. And yes, RuPaul, queens blame it on the edit for a reason. What prompted me to make this video is one of my recent TikToks going into what we discussed about the Gigi and Sherry storyline. I said in the video that I was morbidly curious to see how the edit would play everything out, but after writing this script, I honestly think I'm good. Doing my research and putting into perspective just how much an edit can manipulate the perception of a queen, I'm happy that Sherry didn't get the hero's edit and I'm happy that we don't get to see it. If we did see the original edit, I know there would be viewers to fall in love with Sherry even though she did horrible things. So the edit is better staying lost. However, what we can do is speculate on how storylines were affected by the removal of Sherry because at the end of the day, I'm here to talk about a TV show I love. So let's go queen by queen and see how their storyline was affected. For both Dahlia and The Rock, I don't think Sherry had much interaction with them outside of what we saw in the first episode that they appeared in. Sherry did have a heart to heart with Rock in the episode, so there may have been some relationship there, but outside of that, Dahlia was also a New York queen, but I don't think there was much interaction on the show. Early outs don't really have a lot of storyline with people who make it super far, so uh, yeah, not too much to say. Nikki is another New York queen, so there's probably a little interaction of them like just acknowledging that they're both from New York, but storyline, I don't think we got a lot of that with uh, Nikki also being an early out as well. Aiden and Britta are the next two out, and obviously I think that their storyline was heavily affected by Sherry being removed. I touched on this a little earlier, but every single storyline that wasn't touched by Sherry's removal was cranked up to 11, making everything way more important than it actually was. At the end of the day, it doesn't fucking matter, okay? The bitch is safe, leave her the fuck alone. With very little other storyline going on, Aiden and Britta's feud was at the center of everyone's minds, leading to both of them getting a lot of hate. The peak of their feud was in the dead of quarantine, so it was basically the only thing people really cared about. People started off agreeing with Britta and hating Aiden, and then they flipped and started hating Britta and agreeing with Aiden. I genuinely believe that this is the worst case of hate that we've ever seen on Drag Race. It took a very minor feud, one instigated by Sherry by the way, and turned it into something way more because we had nothing else to focus on within the season. It was then spun to be a hate campaign for both queens, with Britta getting so much hate that she had to leave social media. This was one of the times where I was the most ashamed to be a part of the Drag Race community, and I just really want you guys to send Britta and Aiden a lot of love because they really deserve it, and they didn't deserve this to get as much heat as it did. Out of everyone, Jan easily benefited the most from Sherry's removal. I think her storyline and Aiden and Britta's storyline were the only two stories that were virtually untouched by Sherry's removal. And as it was with Britta and Aiden's, Jan's storyline was turned up to 11. People were screaming robbed left and right for multiple challenges, and it caused Jan to have a wonderful career after the show, like I mentioned earlier. I know Jan wanted to win this. Like, y'all didn't see her face when she turned around, but I saw it in, you know, like the scary movies with the, the serial killer finally just like snaps and just starts tearing faces off? In my opinion, Widow should have made top 4 and could have won the whole show if the cards were in her favor. I felt like there were multiple times over the season where they favored Sherry over Widow even though Widow actually did better in the challenge. I sense there may have even been a little rivalry between Widow and Sherry as well. But it was overshadowed between the competition of Sherry and Gigi so it probably didn't get as much time meaning that Widow was cut a little earlier. Heidi was the fan favorite of the season for obvious reasons. Arg, mateys! I loved it, honey! The Pirates of the Caribbean was in town, oh my god! Is one of her legs a peg leg? I need to know right now. I don't know how much of Heidi we would have gotten with Sherry in the picture playing the hero. I think overall, Heidi would have still been the fan favorite, but the editors probably wouldn't have turned to her as often for these confessionals and all of her funny moments. So overall, I think she really benefited from Sherry's removal. The second half of the season is interesting each week because we just like seeing the raw talent of these queens dominating the challenges. Every week there were at least two or three queens who had a justified win, so it was just really entertaining seeing everything play out and see who would get the win in the end. Jackie is a perfect example because she was always in the running for a win and though she didn't win, I never really saw her as anything less than a top 4 competitor. She really did have what it took to go all the way to the end. I think she did falter a little bit with the removal of Sherry because they both are New York queens and there was this running joke that Sherry didn't know who Jackie was. I don't know, it was probably funny in the moment, but they probably did have good interaction about New York and just having that connection right there. 
I don't know if there would have been a lot with Crystal and Sherry. Crystal would have definitely been Team GG. I mean, obviously. Mm. Uh, oops, I didn't mean to click on that one. But outside of maybe being the person to ask questions about the rivalry, I don't think there would have been a ton. I think Crystal benefited from Sherry being gone because we got a lot more of her in the edit and she was able to become another lovable queen that everyone really enjoys. Hmm. And finally, Jada, the essence of beauty and talent. Unproblematic, unbothered, I really don't think there was much interaction with her and Sherry. I think that Jada was just there to win and that's what she did. There may have been little arguments between them because they didn't really see eye to eye in the first episode they were in. but. Definitely not a full on feud like with Gigi and Sherry. And with that, that's every queen down. What's clear is that every single person's talent and personality was able to shine through even with Sherry being removed. Though I think Sherry was the center for the storylines on the season, the queens were still able to benefit from her being gone. I sat on the floor. There are three lessons to learn from this video. Lesson one is what you see isn't always the truth. Whether this be an edit of a queen or a rumor online, take everything slow and really evaluate what you're looking at. Lesson two is to appreciate the queens for what they bring and know who they are off the TV screen. Bottom line is that we're watching a reality competition show. What we see on TV isn't a complete picture of who this queen is in real life. And lesson three is to stand with the victims and their journey towards justice. Once again, please do not send any hate to anyone mentioned in this video. It's easy to hate, but it's way more fun to spread love. So pick one of your favorite queens that I mentioned in this video and send them some love from me. Thanks for listening guys, I really appreciate you sticking all the way through this video with me. I'm so grateful that my channel has done so well recently and I've actually just hit 1500 subscribers. Hopefully I can do more content like this because this is what I'm really passionate about and I just want to keep impressing you guys and make content that I'm proud of. So. Thank you so much. I cannot express how thankful I am.